All right. Okay. Well, let's see here. Where is Zoom? There we go. Welcome, everybody. This is day one mm -hmm. of the on the bit challenge. I got frazzled because our internet was not working. I was like, oh no, this is the worst day for it to not work. Um, welcome to day one of the 2022 on the bit challenge with mm -hmm. Thomas and Shanna. <laughs> this is us. We are going to get going right away. So the way we're going to do this this time is the chat is for all of you. If you have questions, save your questions for Friday. We will answer all the questions on Friday. I'm sorry, but we have many requests to keep it pared down in time length. So the only way we could do that is to not answer questions um, each day and just do our training, boom, in, out. Then it's you guys can watch it. You can always post something in the Facebook group. But if you really want to make sure we cover the question in depth, come on Friday and, or I'm sorry, on Friday. I did that again, day five, Monday, mm -hmm. Friday, Friday's tomorrow. <laughs> I know we used to always do Monday to Friday. Oh, no. This time it's no, Thursday no. to Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going yeah. to get going yeah. right away. So, Is there anything else? And Sandy should be here. She can help you. If you have any problems, just in the chat, um, Carol is here too. Okay. Carol cozy. Hi, Carol. Good. So yeah, Carol Cozy and Sandy uh, Calling are on our team and they are here to help you in the chat. Go ahead and chat amongst yourselves. I'm actually going to close the chat so it's not distracting us. Mm -hmm. So sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. I hate doing that. Okay, let's get going. Okay. Wait. Thomas. What? What? Share the screen, please. Share the screen. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. share the screen. Oh, Which one? The keynote. Keynote. Oh, maybe it didn't open. Hold on. And we have to keynote. restart. Yeah, we're going to just to like, make sure that that wasn't yeah, the exactly. trouble with the internet. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Oops. No, oops. 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 Here. The screen. There we go. Yeah, oh, okay. And we can hit play it. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So here we are. Yeah, there you go. Day one of the On the Bit Challenge. Today we're going to talk about what mm -hmm. On the Bit really means. Yeah, yeah cover some issues. <laughs> okay, so Thomas, what does yeah. On the Bit really mean? Yeah, good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I was young, I yeah, just didn't really know because nobody explained it to me. Everybody sort of assumed, everybody knows. But I think everybody was a little fuzzy on that. And uh, I just thought if the nose is vertical and the neck is round, the horse is on the pit, right? But that's, you know, usually sort of a, uh, an, you know, re result or effect or byproduct of being on the pit. But the horse can have a round neck and a vertical nose without being on the pit. <laughs> they can be a little behind the pit, for example, and just pretend they're on the pit. So on the bit is is more it's not just the neck and the and the head and it's not something that ha takes place only between the rider's hand on the horse's mouth but it really involves the whole body mm. of the horse and of the rider and so it's really easy to um think that on the bit mm -hmm. is about the head and neck because mm -hmm. that's what we it most significantly mm -hmm. see going on but that is actually only the result of mm -hmm. what you're actually doing mm -hmm. it that it just shows you that you did it correctly mm -hmm. if this comes yeah, yeah. it's a yeah the outline is sort of a byproduct or the, the end result in a way uh, but it's you know the the key the the core of of being on the bed really um, has more to do with uh, um, the energy of the hind legs traveling through the spine along the spine of the horse through the rider's midsection uh, to the bit if you ride with a bit or to the nose the bridge of the nose if you ride with a bitless bridle and then you know the energy gets recycled through the reins through the rider seat to the hind leg so you have a bit of a an energy circuit. And uh, when you can feel the energy of the hind legs traveling through the body without getting blocked and without you know leaving the body, um, you can feel each hind leg in your hand. Like the right hind leg, when it reaches forward and touches down, you can feel it. It's like a tiny little pulse in 
your right hand, right? And when the left hand leg reaches forward and touches down, you feel a tiny little pulse in your left hand. This is you know, as, as if you put your, your hand on an, on an artery, you know, you feel the blood pumping, you feel that pulse. And it's the same thing with the rein contact. If the horse is on the bit, then there is a connection from the hind legs through the spine to the bit. And you feel that, right? Whereas if you don't feel anything in your hand, then either the horse isn't pushing enough from behind. So the impulse from the hind legs is too small. It doesn't reach all the way to the bit. Or it could be that that energy impulse gets blocked or intercepted somewhere. Like if the horse's back is tight, then you won't feel that little pulse in your rein, for example. If the pole is locked up, you won't feel the impulse reaching your, your hand either. Now, or if the horse curls up, you know, then it's like a hole in a garden hose and the water leaves the hose through that hole and then nothing comes out at the nozzle in the front. And that's a little bit the effect when you have a kink in the neck, you know, when, when there is this false bend, you know, around the third vertebra, like looking from the side, there is the neck coming out of the withers and then there is this break and then there's the pole going or, down or the top of the neck going down a little bit and then the skull you know usually look behind the vertical um the horse would be behind the bit and then you don't feel it huh? um you don't feel the impulse or the energy connection and if nothing reaches your hands then there is nothing that could be recycled back to the hind legs you know so and in in order to have that connection from back to front the the horse has to be relatively free of contractions and stiffness and bracing um, the horse has to be relatively straight because if the horse is not straight or if he's not aligned properly on the line of travel with his feet then he will push more with one hind leg than the other then you will have more contact on one side and less contact on the other and uh, or the horse will brace against one rein and maybe pretend to be light in the other rein so it's um it's not a not a good contact right a, a good uh, good contact you know should be light steady and even <laughs> so that uh, it's it's a steady stream of of energy kind of moving into your hands not a a contact that that's intermittent and it comes and goes but there should be a steady line of communication right and it should be fairly even left and right and it, should be you know light enough so it's comfortable and uh, the horse shouldn't lean on you <laughs> you shouldn't have to hold the horse up with your hand that's his own job right he, he needs to hold himself up and the the rain should just be a like a telephone line where you hear the horse you listen to the horse and the horse listens to you and then you can exchange information mm -hmm. all right so so this image that I put up here is the circle of the aid. So I went ahead and bumped it up now yeah. because you started talking about this. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So the red arrows um, indicate that with your lower leg, you can ask the horse to pick up his hind leg, right? And that creates movement in a, in a sense. And then as engagement, of yeah, the, engagement, the exactly. so as he, as the horse picks up the right hind leg here, for example, the left hind leg starts to push the body mass forward. And that pushing impulse, the extension of that left hind leg, you know, sends a, an impulse through the spine that goes through the rider's pelvis and hips and you know, up the, the neck, through the pole, to, to the bit or the nose. It, it doesn't matter if you have a bit or if you if you ride bitless, the principle is exactly the same. Yeah. Um, so it goes to the nose or the jaw, wherever your reins connect. And then it travels through the reins and that, you know, through your elbow, through your pelvis, midsection, back to the hind leg, you know, and then it, it renews itself. It's, it's, a, it's a power circuit, a little bit like an electrical uh, circuit in a, in a way. So the, you could say your leg, your lower leg, sends the horse to the seat, the seat can then pass the energy on to the rein and the rein can then recycle that energy through your seat back to the hind legs, which then creates a little bit of a flexion when the hind leg um, touches down. And uh, the hind legs function like, like 
springs. Like they, when they touch down, they support the body mass for a little bit that flexes them a little, and then they e extend their joints. After flexing for a moment, they extend again. And uh, the, mm, you know, when the horse is in balance and going forward well, then the body mass landing on top of the hind leg flexes the hind leg, that flexion of that hind leg creates a, an equal and opposite force, so to speak. You know, so if you, if the body mass compresses the hind leg between the ground and the body, then this hind leg will want to um, extend its joints and basically go back to its original shape, you know, just like a spring that you compress that wants to um, go back to the original shape when you when you let go and, that, and you can ride a horse in such a way that um the horse flexes his hind legs just because the uh, hind leg steps under the body after the suspension phase in the mm -hmm. trot for example the body mass lands on that hind leg that compresses it a little but then it also it bounces the um the body mass back up it's a little bit also like a like when you're dribbling a ball you know you can give little impulses from above and then the ball you know bounces against the ground the ground bounces the, the ball back and so, so the horse feels a little bit like a like a bouncy ball <laughs> like a beach ball okay, i'm gonna stop the share for a okay. second okay so you guys can see us for a minute um do you want to talk about these other terms like yeah through with some correct contact yeah they they're all i mean already mentioned the contact yeah they're they're related. They're very related, right? So on on the bit implies a certain degree of throughness or permeability. Like the energy has to travel through the horse's back, through the spine, you know, all parts of the spine, the pole down to the, the nose or the mouth, and then back. And uh, in the other direction, your half holes, for example, are supposed to go through, as we say, right? So in other words, if you give a half hold, the horse should flex the hind leg a little in response and then bounce back and push off again. So mm -hmm. for example, like in, on your dressage test or your instructor tells you you need to work on throughness or the horse is not through enough. This is often what they're actually referring to that this circuit of energy mm -hmm. is not flowing mm -hmm. unimpeded through the horse. Mm -hmm. When it flows unimpeded, that's through. Yeah. Otherwise, you have blockage somewhere, and mm -hmm. you need to yeah. identify yeah. where the blockage is yeah. and then eliminate yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah. And if the energy of the hind legs doesn't flow through the body back to front, then your half holds, for example, probably won't flow in the opposite direction, front to back either. So they, they won't reach the hind leg and they won't flex the hind leg because they get stuck somewhere. Um, muscle blockages are a little bit like landslides that or mudslides that block a road. You know, if you have debris and rocks and, and mud, you know, on the road, then your traffic can't flow, right? So everybody's stopped. <laughs> that same thing happens when a muscle is stiff or braced. And uh, the, the, the other um, reason why energy doesn't go through, aids don't go through is, um, like the false bends I, know, I, I mentioned, right? So one is a longitudinal one where, you know, you have the neck coming out of the withers and then there is this sharp angle, more or less sharp angle, you know, and then the, the neck goes down and then the nose is behind the vertical. But there's also a lateral false bend when the base of the neck is too loose and wobbly and the, the neck gets sort of kinked to the side and the horse pushes through the outside shoulder, for example. <clears throat> and then the energy leaves the horse's body in that hypermobile area as well. You know, so then the, the impulse of the hind legs doesn't reach your hand. And then if the horse has a false bend and you try to do anything with the rein, whether you're trying to half hold or ask for any kind of lateral flexion or whatever, the horse will just um, yield at the base of the neck and either overbend to the side or he'll curl up and then yeah, it gets stuck there. It doesn't go beyond the withers. It gets stuck in front of the withers. So in in, in all these cases, the horse would not be um, no, not be through, right? Not be permeable for the aid. So there's always a um, permeability that goes from the hind legs <coughs> to the skull, and then there's a permeability in the other direction from the skull to the hind legs, and then there's also, in a way, a lateral permeability.
you know, from one side to the other because you want energy impulses to be able to travel from one side of the horse to the other. And you want the horse to be able to shift his weight from one side to the other. That's kind of related <clears throat> to that too. And correct contact. Yeah, contact is very much a result of balance and um yeah suppleness in a in a way and, and what is correct what is incorrect what is <laughs> in a nutshell <laughs> correct you know, a correct contact would be a contact where you can feel the horse's body in the reins because in, in the reins you can really feel pretty much every body part of the horse um relatively evenly so it's mm, not yeah. exceptionally mm, heavier in one yeah, rein than the yeah. other like as you know I said earlier in in class in the classical tradition they always used to say the contact should be light steady and even mm -hmm. so and steady means like i said this constant energy connection where you feel it's like a like a stream of water that flows mm -hmm. you know and it's it's like this constant stream of water not intermittent but it's it's always constant a constant flow of information right not like a cell phone line that keeps cutting out and you only hear every other word. But it's annoying, it's, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, yes, even basically means left and right should be similar or, yeah. you know, I mean, we'll never be 100% identical, no. but at least very can't close. Completely yeah. eliminate crookedness, yeah. but we yeah. do our best yeah. to, to yeah. eliminate it as much as we can. Yeah, and the horse could reach for the bit with a certain inquisitiveness, yeah. but you shouldn't lean on it, right? So you shouldn't mm -hmm. feel like, oh my God, you know, I need to work out. Up, I know. Right? <laughs> you know. Yeah, you shouldn't hold the horse's head and neck up, or the horse shouldn't lean on you it's like a fifth leg. Communication, mm -hmm. not exactly. to, to you know drag the horse around, or for the horse to lean yeah. on you around the arena. Yeah, yeah and the correct. I mean, the the contact, whatever the contact is, tells you something about the training level or the, the current state of yeah. balance and straightness. Like if the horse, if the contact isn't even left and right, then the horse is crooked, right? Um, if the horse, if the contact is too heavy, the horse is on the forehand. If the horse curls up, the horse could be on the forehand too. It's just, you know, different manifestation of the same issue. It often depends a little bit on, on the neck conformation of the horse. You know, some horses tend to curl up when things go wrong. Other horses tend to lean on you or they go up and against the rein and invert. Yeah, so the confirmation plays a big role in that. So what about all these quick fixes, like draw reins, uh -huh. um, putting, yeah. putting, changing the bit, you know, trying to fix the, the problem with mm. the horse's head not coming mm. down or the horse being too heavy with changing the bit, yeah. or uh, let's just put the double bridle on mm. him, <laughs> you know, can't get the head down, put the double bridle mm. on. Um, yeah. Or, you know, all of these lunging aids, uh, you know, that just serve to bring yeah. the horse, horse's head down. The problem with those is that they only address a symptom. They usually just try to change the position of the head and neck, but they're not addressing balance problems, straightness problems, suppleness problems, you know, throughness problems, so to speak. So you can train a horse to put the head and neck in a certain place. Um, a lot of people do that actually that they teach the horse to just keep their head in one place and not move it but then they're disconnected at the base of the neck so there is no more energy transmission from the hind legs past the withers like it, it all ends some somewhere there and then you know the, the head and neck just they stay in a in a certain frame but you can't feel the hind legs and your your half walls don't really go go through anymore in the opposite direction either. So the horse is broken into two pieces. And uh, yeah, anything that, that addresses surface level symptoms, but um, ignores underlying root causes, you know, it's, it's not going to make things any better. And actually they can um, damage the horse too. Um, if a horse is always very crooked or always very much on the forehand, then that causes a lot of wear and tear because he, he'll overuse certain body parts, usually front legs, and he'll underuse other body parts. And depending on, on how you use these um, auxiliary reins or, or you know, um, mm -hmm. you can also really damage the horse's back if you just hold you know, if you have a double bridle when the horse is not ready, then they, they may elevate the neck and put the head down and so on. 
but the back then is dropped because the hind legs are not supporting it. And then yeah. you know, the horse it's very might... hard to fix that afterwards yeah. later. Yeah. And the horse might develop kissing spines fine. or it's mm -hmm. bavin in the hawk mm -hmm. or yeah. you know, ring bone in the front leg, things like that. Tendon injuries if you ride them very long, very hard. It makes sense to do it correctly right mm -hmm. from the beginning, mm -hmm. not to try to speed the process yeah. with any of these yeah. gadgets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Want to watch a video? Sure. Okay. Short so. video from our Oops. student, Noor Tanger from Holland. Yeah. Okay. It's mm -hmm. not, oh, you know what? I know why. I have to go put it on that page. Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And we'll want one before I share the screen. I'm just going to mm -hmm. stick it at the spot. Gosh. Let me just press one. It's a longer video, and we want to just start it right exactly where we're yeah. going to need it. Okay. So uh, I lost my cursor. Okay, here we go. Yeah, full screen. No, full screen. Do I have to do anything else? No. The settings? Okay. Um, yeah, we can do oh, actually, you know what? We have to go back up because we need to optimize for video. I forgot that here. Otherwise, it doesn't play very smoothly. Oh. And uh, okay. then I just want to check the resolution 720s. No, but you see, so a 360 is fairly safe. It's not as you know clear, but it it will be more of a video. Otherwise, it will be. So you know, it might a be a little pixelated, of, but yeah, it runs more smoothly. Yeah, hopefully, you should see it. If you can't, somebody type into not into the chat, but into the Q and A. Mm -hmm. If you can't see it, yeah. So here, yeah. So it's just a few seconds. Okay. Oh. And yeah, then. So we'll go back and watch yeah, this yeah, several yeah, times. Exactly. So that, that was a, just very short. This is a little uh, montage yeah. that she sent me mm -hmm. um, of some various little writing clips. Yeah, so, the PRE Stallion. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you can see the, the energy transmission from the pushing hind leg through the back, uh, the pole, yeah, to the reins. And the contact looks very light here, right? And then the, the contact gets recycled through the elbow pelvis connection back to the hind legs. It's very important that um, your forearms are connected to your pelvis. Oh, good, it's okay. To your pelvis rather than to your shoulders. If you don't have a good connection from your midsection here to your forearms, <laughs> then whatever contact the horse takes will travel up your arms and then it gets stuck here and you won't be able to, to send it back into the hind legs. And then horses often get very annoyed and they can start arguing with the contact, even if it's very light, you know, whereas if you have that connection here from your back muscles through the elbow, you know, to the rein, to the bit, then, uh, you know, the, the horse doesn't mind the contact and he accepts the aids. <laughs> so now we have another yeah. little clip. 151. Yeah, now let's see here. We're just skipping all the other stuff yeah, that yeah. she was doing because it's not necessarily relevant. Yeah. Okay, so she's lengthening the stride. Oh, you stopped at a good spot. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's always interesting to to stop. So the horse has good shoulder freedom, of course. You know, it's a PRE stallion, but he also engages the hind leg well. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the horse know. can't lift the back if they don't engage the hind leg. You mm -hmm. know, that's why it's really important yeah. that it starts from the hind leg. Even better. Even better. Yeah. yeah. Ideally, the nose could be a tad more forward. Yes, here, you know. but he's a stallion, so mm -hmm. he also has a very crusty neck. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. ultimately, we would like the pole to be up yeah. a little bit more. Mm -hmm. yeah. But but the hind leg is coming speaking. forward mm -hmm. well. Um, yeah, so that that's that's important, right? That that the hind leg doesn't get blocked somehow by the rein, by the hand, or by the seat. But uh, yeah, the hind leg needs to be able to travel. 
as far forward as, as possible. And you can see and, uh, she's not doing anything to restrict yeah. the head and neck. He yeah. may be coming a little bit low of his own accord here, but the video has a still yeah. there that's oh, good. positive. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's of his own doing. She's not yeah. pulling she's the not head pulling in. The she's not preventing him in any way with the ring contact. Yeah from yeah. coming up and forward. Yeah, you can see how and the contact is light and it's slightly mm -hmm. looped here. She's releasing probably there with the inside rein yeah. a little bit. And we'll talk and, uh, more about mm -hmm. the rider component tomorrow, but mm -hmm. it's still worth noting today. You yeah. really get a nice feeling of yeah. the rider really bringing the horse through forward from back to front here. That she's really almost pushing the horse forward with mm. almost with her hands instead of you know pulling the head down and in. It's almost like she's bringing the whole horse forward <clears throat> towards yeah. the head. Yeah. So here you see a little yes. bit more the nose going mm -hmm. forward yes. to peak the this contact, and, you, and you, this this is a good moment here, right? You see how the right hind leg is on the ground and pushing left hind leg is in the air swinging nicely under the body. I mean, ideally the, the hind leg should touch down right under your seat bone. You know, it looks like it's going to do that. And mm -hmm. the diagonal front leg then is nicely parallel here. The cannon bone here and the forearm here, they're parallel, right? Which means so, the energy is not disconnected yeah. in the horse's body. Yeah. So here in, in this moment, you see a nice flow of the energy from the hind leg, mm -hmm. the crew to, through the back, up the withers, up the neck, and then down back to the either nose or paw uh, or, or bit, you know. So if, if you rode with uh, with a bitless bridle, it would look the same and it, the mechanics would be really the same. Mm -hmm. you know? The bit has nothing to do with yeah, being on exactly. the bit. That's the funny thing. Yeah, in, uh, yeah on the bit is sort mm -hmm. of a typical English expression. In Germany, yeah. they call this through the paw, which is in a way a better, better term, better. I think, because it has nothing to do with a, with a bit, but it, it, in, in a, sense it means through the pole means that the pole is relaxed and the energy, energy goes through okay. in both directions yeah. and the pole is often a, a challenging uh, part of the body depending on, on the conformation of the horse the pole is often you know tight in many horses because maybe their uh, conformation is not ideal and also you know, whatever training problems um, that were ridden into the horse, you know, they, they often result in the horse locking the paw, bracing the jaw and, and so on, you know, and tightening the muscles around the, yeah, the paw and the TMJ. What is paw? Genick in German, it's, <laughs> yeah. I don't know yeah, the, the Dutch word is like here, this is the, the paw. Is, if you can see where the mouse yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. It's the, at the, the top of the bridle, where yeah. the bridle sits yeah. at the very top. Yeah, yeah. So right the, behind here. Joint between mm -hmm. the stall and the first, mm -hmm. the atlas. And uh, to some extent, the second cervical vertebra, you know, plays a role, of course, as well. You know, um, yeah. Because yeah, one of the joints can only open and close vertically, longitudinally, and the other one can only rotate laterally or less, right? So um, they, they, both of those joints are necessary to for the skull to move in all the directions, like up, down, left, right, and, and so on. Yeah. Yeah, and this, uh, so this round outline of the neck and this relaxation of the pole that leads to a bit of a, a dropping of the pole, that's mm -hmm. the result of, of the horse being balanced and straight and supple and the energy traveling through the body without getting stopped anywhere. Actually, you know, where we stopped at this time, it shows the rein contact really nicely, but it's not the best moment yeah. for the hind leg, which would be actually really educational for you to notice mm -hmm. that you can see the result of that is the back is just a little bit more dropped at this moment mm -hmm. here than it was in earlier other mm -hmm. times when we stopped it. And you, this is a direct mm -hmm. consequence mm -hmm. of the hind leg not engaging and stepping under enough. Yeah, and you see how dynamic everything is. Things can change it, from one stride to the next. Absolutely. You, know? you can't really so, fully assess yeah. the training of a horse based on one photo. Right. And, uh, yeah, it's a living being, right? And <laughs> everything is in motion, so. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, Things change, you know, they get a little better, they get a little worse. Yes. And 
they can horse horses can get slightly crooked at certain moments and that will show up in the posture and in the in the rain context horses can lose their balance from one stride to the next a little bit that shows up in the rain context and they gain their balance they the rider corrects it straightens the horse and again you see a change in the posture you see a change in the rain context so it's a step-by-step -step kind of thing really you know it's not like a computer program that you download and then it's there forever but uh, it's something you work on every day and you have to yeah, cultivate it and you know yeah polish it improve it cultivate it you know and it's it's dynamic it's it's a living entity that uh, changes you know so we also had we could look really quick before we wrap it up again. oh okay yeah a picture yeah. of Thomas. Yeah, that's me on a Lucy Tano stallion here. Yeah. Um, and uh, the, he, you, you can see the connection from the hind legs through the back, and uh, you know, the withers lifting, the back lifting, and then um, yeah, the energy travels up to the pole and mm -hmm. then down to the to the contact. I'm releasing yes. the right rein here a little bit, so it's a very light contact at that moment. I see, it, of course, it's in a nice self carriage here. Mm -hmm. It's just a basic trot. It's nothing fancy, right? It's just a it's just a moment in a training trot. Yeah, session. Just, exactly, yeah. just basic walking trot. Um, but yeah, the old masters always used to say that that balance and uh, suppleness are the cornerstones of dressage, and that's always a the focus really helped the horse find his balance with the rider's weight on his back, you know, which is different than if he's on his own. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then remove the blockages. And uh, if there are any leaks where the energy leaves the body, you want to patch those up. And, uh, and then the horse can use his body in an efficient way, energy efficient way without muscles working against each other and so on. Okay, so we have a prize for today for, I'm going to, in just a moment, select somebody out of the participants list and you will receive uh, an ebook called The Young Horse Arena GPS. This is a selection of exercises, gymnastic exercises you can ride with a young horse. Of course, you can ride them with any horse, but they're, oh. it's a collection that is put together to help the training of the young horse. So I'm about to select somebody. Let's see, I'm going to do that right now. Let's turn it to participants list instead. Where, how do I see the participants list? Up there, um, here, participants. Oh, there we go. Okay, there. it's moved, it used to be over yeah. there. Okay. It's 349, that's the longest. That's, that's nice. Days, yeah. Let's see, I'm gonna go, oops, oops, I just, put her on <laughs> I just don't do that. sorry uh I don't want to put her on why did it how do I make that go away I have no idea asked to unmove. no hide non-video participants I don't know remove remove. Remove. Yeah. no I don't want to remove her yeah, from no. the session <laughs> no sorry yeah no. yeah I'll just leave it because the camera is turned off okay anyway. well and so it's uh so Let's see, I just randomly chose a name. I literally just scrolled and stopped at one. So it's Melissa Reinke. Reinke. Congratulations, Thank you get the prize for today. So to claim it, you need to email ridderdressage at gmail.com. Just let my team know and they will get you set up in your account with this and help you get it downloaded and everything. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how to make that go away. That's so um, weird. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, no. I don't know. That's weird. Really weird. We're the only panelists. Yeah. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it seems like. Maybe they don't see that. Yeah. yeah Maybe yeah, you guys see only us. I'm not sure. We'll just set it. Oops. <laughs> I put her to speaker. That's really weird. That is very weird. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. So you guys, know. <laughs> the weirdness of tech. We're horse people, not tech people. Ah. Mm. Okay. And mm. then. Let's see here. And I'm going to go back to share the screen again with this. So let's go to this. And so today you have a little bit of homework. You don't need a horse mm -hmm. for your homework because I know many of you live in locations where you have really bad weather right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
I feel your pain, <laughs> really I do. This exercise, it's an elbow connection exercise, which is a great prelude for tomorrow. So to get the instructions for your homework, it's in the challenge platform, but I'm also going to post it into the Facebook group as well shortly. Um, five minutes, 10 minutes after we're done here today, but you can also go grab it in the challenge platform and go try it right away. As soon as we're done here, we're going to publish it. So it'll be available right away. Mm -hmm. And then join us for tomorrow. We're going to continue from there, talking about the importance of the writer's seat and what the writer's seat can do that can prevent the horse from coming through and on the bit, mm -hmm. but also what you can do with your seat to help the horse to be able to come through better. So join us then. Yeah. And thank you everybody for joining us today. Would love it if you would show up in the Facebook group. Let us know what you thought of today, your ahas, your discoveries. Mm -hmm. Share with everybody else. And there's a bad connection. I will use the recording tomorrow to follow your chat. Oh, I hope it's, is it our connection? Or is it our, mm. is it bad for all of you? Was it, mm. was the, did it cut out a lot? Could somebody let me, oh, it, it's good here. Okay. No, it's fine. Okay, good. Okay, some moments it happens. And we have bad weather here right now in Portugal and that affects our internet very much. That's why we were late getting on at all mm. because I'm actually having to use my mobile data mm -hmm. to get on because our home internet completely not working today yeah the rain slows down the internet here yeah. <laughs> so, so thank you everybody and look we kept it to well yeah, 40, 40 minutes because we started a couple minutes late so yeah. um that's like amazing it's, it's amazing <laughs> so i'm sorry we couldn't answer any of your questions today mm. I, we love answering questions mm. but we have to save them all for day five which is not Friday, <laughs> not Friday, it's Monday, same time. And we're going to, that's the only session that will be long. All the other sessions, we're going to keep them really short and quick like this so that you can get through them. So your life is not, doesn't have to completely stop to get through all of this. And then on the last day, we're just gonna answer all the questions and we'll stay here until we're done. So great, thank you everybody. Thank you. See you in the Facebook group and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye, bye everybody.